questions. So welcome everyone into this um, to this uh, first workshop of uh, another EPH summer school. We'll have another workshop uh, tomorrow morning. And uh, this workshop, so I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, to be able to welcome uh, Mariano, Mariano Vasquez. So Mariano is a group leader at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, and he is a co-founder of, um, of the, the spin-off company, uh, LM Biotech. Uh, that uh, was created so based on the Alia technology, which is a multi-physics format element solver uh, that Mariano and, and his team have developed at the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. And uh, I think that the first big application case of, of Alia, uh, at least in health, so was uh, cardiac modeling and uh, fluid structure interaction. Just correct me if I'm wrong, Mariano. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. And uh, Alia specifically designed so to run efficiently in supercomputers. So that's that's uh, very important uh, characteristics. So more broadly, the research of, of Mariano focuses in computational uh, science and uh, of course, computational biomedicine at organ and, and system level. So uh, take uh, an important part of, of Mariano's activity, if not uh, all of the part, at least in, in research, but uh, he's also then in the, doing research in medical devices and, and, and uh, for the pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical industry. So Mariano, uh, after this introduction, then the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Jerome. Uh, thank you, Anita, for organizing and thanks a lot for inviting me to give the talk. Uh, well, I, um, I, I always, I, I like to give this talk uh, always saying that this is the future of medicine now. It's uh, because some people can think that this is science fiction and this is not science fiction. It is something that it is happening now. And it is, it is used uh, everywhere and, and being used more and more. So if you, you know, these are the typical large cathedral and churches in, in Barcelona. And there is one that you probably does not that you probably don't know, which is this one. Um, it's not that famous, but uh, it is it is being more and more famous because inside this church is Mare Nostrum. So I like to to describe what we do like in a pyramid. So at the at the floor of the pyramid is Mare Nostrum. Mare Nostrum is a very large computer in a chapel, like you can see here. Um, it's a very large one. Um, it's hosted by the by our center. Uh, so this means that uh, our center has um, experience in hardware, software, and, and data management. On top of that is Barcelona Supercomputing Center. It's our center, and it is the it is the the place in which the computer is hosted. So it is like the Spanish government gave us the the computer in two thousand and five, and said, okay, you have to take care of it and and prepare this computer to so anyone any researcher can use it. We are kind of 600, a bit more than 600 researchers in the Spanish public center. And it was, it was born in 2005. On top of that, there is a smaller layer, which is the Alia development team. Uh, it is kind of 10% of the center is devoted to, to development of our code. Um, so it is kind of 50 researchers from different origins, different backgrounds. Um, uh, senior from senior to PhD student and born at the same time in 2005. And at the very top of it, a very small tip is the spin off company that we created in 2018. It's a, it's a company that we created to do technology transfer from to try to make these kind of tools to get faster, to, to put faster in the hands of, of those that will need it. Uh, the tool and um, it is for uh, we we this technology transfer if, is from is for doing in silico clinical trials you will see later what we what we do the technical challenge is to recreate biological system in a computer but the problem is that the more complex the system the large the computer required but the large the computer the more efficient the code must be so this puts a, a, a very stringent requirement on anything that we do working 
by working in such a center, in a supercomputing center, we are forced to do things um, in a way that the computer can can take the most of that we can take the most of the of the of the large computer without any without this uh, this restriction. Uh, okay, you can compile a code in large computer, but it will not be efficient at all. So this uh, this puts a um, more um, an additional layer of complexity. So the background this Alia Alia is a <clears throat> Parallel multi-scale simulation code. It is used in industry-related projects. So we have different verticals, aerospace, energy, environment, and biomedical. Biomedical is one of our, let's say, favorite, uh, favorite um, verticals. Uh, it is the only multi-physics, <coughs> multi-scale code for biomedical, which is used at organ, organ level that was born and developed in a supercomputing center. This makes that we are not smarter than others, but due to this restriction that I told you that, that we need to make the code efficient to run in these supercomputers just gave us some advantages for doing these, these sort, of, sort of things. The code is used in different projects. For instance, in this case, this movie that you're seeing is, in a project, uh, is used in a project uh, with Iberdrola, which is an electrical company here in Spain, uh, to simulate um, wind fields. The concept of the code is that it is for HPC-based simulation um, for supercomputers. I'm not saying that all biomedical simulations require larger, large supercomputers. You don't need, not, not at all. But in those cases in, in which you need them, uh, well, there we are. It, uh, the code is coupled multi-physics and multi-scale. It's for large-scale problems. And the idea is to try to predict uh, the behavior of these uh, biomedical systems. In general, when in the code, we can do complex and conventional physical mathematical models because we can program them. In general, pre-process is complex because the size of the problems is large, so the mesh is large. Post-process is also complex because for visualization and analysis, so we must do something in order to make this more efficient. Um, is for Then you have this big data management and visualization. Again, this is always a problem that we have with these sort of things. So to us, all levels are accountable for parallel programming. So it goes from the core down to the, down to the supercomputer. So it is like we cannot, the, our code is hybrid um, open MP and MPI. And we take profit of both of them. Part of the code is compiled for GPUs. Uh, we take care about the how to program in order to make the compiler understand vectorization. We work a lot to also to improve MPI communication between the different uh, between the different MPI tasks. We work a lot on on date on um, load balancing of the applications. So it is like uh, and of course on on data formats formats for input output. Uh, also, it is very important for us to compile the code in different architectures because we don't know which is going to be the next supercomputer architecture. So it, uh, we work in a mix of all of all these. As a, we started more or less as a game uh, to group in everything done biomedical uh, with, with a color red. So we, we talk about Alia Red, everything that is done with our code in biomedical. So these are simulation tools for, bi for biomedical. What we do is in silico clinical trials. So our goal is not, not to run one single heroic, not to have one single heroic run, but many large runs. And to, that's why you need uh, your code to be efficient. We work at organ and tissue level. Uh, in general, as I said before, complex problems will require supercomputers. Not all of them require supercomputers, but in this case, yes. Uh, we started working on cardiovascular and respiratory. I will give an example on cardio and a couple of examples on cardiovascular. And the collaborators are pharma, medtech, academia. Um, so in a typical engineering material, you see something like this. It, everything is very well ordered. Um, the scales are well ordered. But the problem is that, like metals, plastic, rubber. But the problem is that the bi biological tissue is working in a different way, more or less like this one. You have kind of separated individuals with their own, with their own personality, uh, trying to do some things um, together, uh, which represent that you will have emergent macroscopic 
uh, properties. But uh, coupling is is very is very complex from the different scales and and physics. So the the scale. It, the scales and, and, and organization levels are very large. They go from kilometers down to nanometers. Um, and very low levels decisively influence in high levels. Of course, you don't need to solve everything. That's, this does not mean that you have to solve all levels simultaneously. simultaneously. But what it means is that we have to, to take into account all multi-level uh, influences. At least you, you need to model them as as best as possible this is the vision of the of the fda it is very likely that you have already that you've seen this many times it's a it's a vision that they have on that we completely adhere um, you have this today any medical device that that have to go through a regulatory process they need a laboratory human and animal tests and a small part of computer uh, testing but things are changing very rapidly and moving in this direction. So you are going to still have human, animal, and laboratory tests, of course, but now computer modeling and simulation is going to be much, much larger and more important, but it appears this new, this new character here, the virtual patient. This represents a complexity boost because in this case, the model, the modeling and simulation will not just the isolated therapy. It is not like you will need to model the um, the the formation of a of a metal of a catheter. So you need to do it on the patient. So you need to model also the system, the organ, tissue, cell. This implies comprehensive modeling. So you need to take into account many many different things, and you have to take into account comorbidities, patient variability, and of course requires specific in vivo and experimental validation on different contexts of use, which means that this um, validation is not like the one that we are used to have in, in, in engineering stuff. So that's why it, was, it is so difficult for us to, to do it. So I will show you in these last 10 minutes, I will show you some examples of the kind of things that we do. First, uh, the examples are going to be related to cardiovascular system, although we do other things. I like to write here the collaborators for you to see that these are some of them. I always forgot. I always forget uh, some of them, but these are some of them. Um, as you see, I, I like to write this here in order to see that the collabor our collaborators are from very different origins. There is regulatory uh, companies, academia, hospitals. So it is a very multidisciplinary, um, multidisciplinary um, endeavor, and this makes this very difficult, but very rewarding and very interesting to, to do. So from the engineering viewpoint, uh, let me describe a virtual heart. A virtual heart um, has an electrophysiology part. This electrophysiology part is in turn um, double. So you have, a, you have tissue and you have the cell model, as, I, as you, you maybe you remember, I told you that the you need to take into account the different models, the different scales. So one way you are not you are, so you are modeling groups of cells, not individual ones, but group of cells, and you plug this in the tissue propagation. So this is electrophysiology, which is uh, a diffusion equation with this, with some uh, source terms related to the cell. Then you have mechanics, and this mechanics is coupled with electrophysiology through electromechanical coupling. This is another model that you have to include. This electromechanical coupling is not at all complex, and it is done at vo in, in the volume at Gauss points or at nodes. And it, it can be controversial because there are different models. These are physiological models. The um, um, computation and implementation is not that difficult, but uh, it, it, is, uh, it, it is very, there are plenty of different models. Then mechanics is coupled to blood uh, and blood is uh, coupled through fluid solid uh, interaction. This is more complex from the computational point of view. Also, it's more complex if you want to do it efficiently in parallel. Uh, but um, it, there is, it is nothing that you cannot, you cannot do, that you cannot solve. So it's, uh, it's okay. To all of these, then you have to add the anatomy and physiology. This is the first big difference with engineering, is that 
you don't have uh, you can have the cat file of an aircraft but you cannot have the cat file of a person so you need to do your cat file uh, and your mesh as as best as possible from images typically so so this is the first difficulty and you have to include all the physiology in in the model in the model the second different thing with respect to to an engineering problem is the analysis of the results and as i said the validation and verification this is not done in the same way that you do it in that you do in in an engineering problem because you don't have you have scarce information and you have to do many times you have to do indirect uh, indirect validation and verification so it is a full field and also that's why these sort of modeling and simulation tools uh, took um, so long to take off in this in this uh, business. It is taking off, but it is difficult. So this is an example of the kind of problems that we can do with our with our code. So this is a person. Um, we we got this synthetic patient from our database, and the idea is that we we want to. Um, improve the implantation of a pacemaker. So this is the control problem in the control, the control case. So we are studying only the systole. So it is just the contraction of the ventricles. Atria are there for mechanical purposes. They are inert, not, not uh, doing anything. The, um, the valves are, two valves are completely open. The pulmonary and aortic open and the mitral and tricuspid are completely closed and we are just we want to study just the moment uh, when the when the ventricles um, contract and then so the in this case the ventricles are colored by electrical by electrophysiology which is propagated in the in the muscle and then what we what we did is we disease the the heart and we the this person we disease him and then we we heal him so you can see here the, this is a disease which is left bundle branch block in which you have this desynchrony in which the two ventricles are not activated at the same time. So we put here, we put more or less around here, a, a pacemaker. And what we do is we change the synchronization of the pacemaker. We change it um, in order to recover the some stroke volume of the, of the, of the heart. This is another problem with a, with a different pacemaker. This is a very sophisticated one in which the pacemaker is all, it's, it's just this. This is this uh, small gadget that goes pinned inside the, the ventricle, right ventricle walls. And the idea in, in this case is to study the effect of this pacemaker in the, of this small gadget which is not that small, as you see, if you compare with the ventricles, the effect of this gadget in the, in the blood flow. It is very important that you don't have any stagnation points that you can produce, that can produce thrombus. So this is very important to analyze the fluid mechanics. It is also important to study the, you don't want that this pacemaker get loose in your body. So you need to analyze also the forces on the pacemaker as it moves. And also, uh, well, last but not least, you would like to to optimize the place in which you put the pacemaker. The model is so complete that we can do other things. For instance, in this case, this the, the model is sort of a the model is sort of um sort of a mechano with different parts. So in this case, the the this is just the electrophysiology here. There is no mechanical contraction because we are interested in this. And in this case, it's something related to COVID. So this is a drug induced left, left bundle branch block. So this is a person in which, in which uh, we give some dosage of anti-malarial uh, disease, uh, anti-malarial uh, treatment. This is, a, this is also used in, in, well, this is chloroquine. It's used for COVID treatment. And we change the concentration and we observe that it produced these uh, these uh, arrhythmias, uh, and uh, well, we compare, of course, this with papers, and we see that it is more or less good. Um, so we disease the heart, and then we hit it. So this is another heart, another problem. In this case, uh, this is a person that suffered from an infarction, and in many cases, an infarction leaves a, uh, always it leaves a scar, but in many cases, this this uh, a scar. 
And in many cases, this car also produce uh, a, an arrhythmia. So this is a person that has a sustained arrhythmia starting now. So this sustained arrhythmia. And the, and the idea is to test uh, using the same model uh, to test the drug dosage of an antiarrhythmic drug. In this case, it's amiodarone. So we give to this patient uh, two different dosages, one which is the green one, which is not the, it's a, a lower dosage. And with that, you, you still have this self-sustained arrhythmia. In fact, it, is, it grows larger. And with the, with the violet one, you give, uh, you have that this uh, arrhythmia just stopped. So with the, with the, with the, the model allows you to analyze this. This is a different problem. In this case, this is a bioprosthetic aortic valve. Um, so this is a TAVI, which is the uh, transcatheter uh, aortic valve. Um, so in this case, what you, what you see is the effect of changing the rigidity, the stiffness of the valve. So the one to the left is more real and the one to the, to the right is uh, like a flag, as you see, is very soft. And the idea was to test the capabilities of the, of the code to solve different problems. So the goal in this case is to study the fluid mechanics uh, around, the, around the valves in order to see if they can produce, if, if, if they can produce thrombus or facilitating thrombus formation, also to measure the stresses inside the, the valve to study damage uh, and, and things like that. So just some conclusion on, on future lines. Uh, well, this is, is something that it is hap happening now, as I said. Um, as I said also, for there are so many problems in which it is the only way, high performance computing, and there is not, there is not a, a problem on that. HPC is mature enough to be used. So you have good algorithms, solution schemes, implementation strategies, the mathematical models are robust and, and well done. Uh, and you can do plenty of things on the, at the programming level, like load balancing, programming models, hardware and its av availability. Today you can have access, we all can have access to very large supercomputers. Uh, software also, uh, software like ours can be provided to different uh, researchers and, and industries to be used, uh, data sets. And again, this is not science fiction. It looks like, but it is happening now. So today we have tools for doing, for doing all this. The, um, so, but there is a point which is very important. A lot must be done in order to increase the confidence in these tools. But well, look at what happened at other fields like aerospace, energy, climate. These tools have been uh, used and it is right now these tools are core business of these of these uh, fields. So we hope that in the future, it will happen the same. Uh, so industry and government have to fuel the pace uh, and put more money. That's it, it's simple. Uh, and, and learn from COVID-19 lessons. I like to, to put these uh, just in case if there is a politician here in this. Um, so more hands are needed. Uh, students like most of you, on, uh, oh, but also clinical people that can provide clinical and medical insight like doctors. Uh, mathematical modeling, not everything is artificial intelligence. There are other things around. Um, computer science experts in order to make this more efficient. And of course, co-design with hardware architects. The typically hardware, hardware uh, vendors are producing machines that sometimes cannot be used very in a very efficient way. They, they are not designed for the usage that we would like to give. So we can put pressure on them in order to have a better, uh, something that it is closer to our needs. Uh, well, and, and, and that's it. Thank you for your attention. Mariano, thank you very much for this brilliant talk. Uh, do we have a question from Mariano? So raise your hand or type your uh, question in your, uh, in the chat or simply activate the mic and, and, and speak up. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask something. Yeah, Isaac, yeah. Uh, it was in the electrophysiological model. I worked with the O'Hara-Rudy equations. Mm. I wanted to ask uh, 
how do you handle you know the cardiac fiber information for the electrical propagation ah uh, this is very very it's a very good very good question uh, in the cases that that you'll see we use the ohara rudy model also so the 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 in some cases we can use dti information so for those that doesn't know what is this it's a kind of mri in which you can have information on the fibers distribution that you have to process all this information and finally you come up with a with a eventually with a good description of the fiber fields but this is not happen in most of the cases so what we do is we have a we have a um, rule based model which is uh, based on the it is very similar to streeter but with some correction this is done from this was done from someone that used to be at UPF also working with Oscar, uh, which is called Ruben Doste and worked with us. And it is a very, it's a very good model in which it takes a uh, good account of the, of the fiber. So what we do is we use with this model, we can create a, we can create a, a fiber field for the heart, which is good enough for our purposes. Okay. So well, if I can ask another thing, <laughs> Uh, yeah, would sure. it improve with the, the MRI information? I imagine like kind of a synchrotron image perhaps where you can see like the fibers. That okay. would be, yes, that would be great also. Um, the problem is that, well, this kind of information, it is not, uh, not always there, is not the typical one, but uh, all this said, uh, yes, yes, absolutely. In fact, we had a paper with Bart, um, uh, in which uh, with Bart and Patricia, in which they provide uh, um, information uh, for unborn fetuses, uh, hearts, and 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 information came with this with this uh, modality. Uh, but well, it is not the usual thing. But if if you have it, it is great because we can we can put it in the model. Great, thank you. Uh, then we have Siti uh, Kanta who is asking in the chat uh, if the codes are open access and if there is any option for collaboration. Uh, the, co the code is uh, open, has different modalities of access. Uh, it is not, in, for the case of that we are doing here, it is not uh, open source. It's uh, available source in which uh, we provide a non-commercial a non-commercial uh, license uh, to be used, uh, but the, the, this is one possibility. There are different possibilities, but in, in any case, what we do is we work, uh, we do this in collaboration with people. So it's like we, the code is, this, the code for solving these sort of things is nowhere to be downloaded and used, but if we establish a collaboration agreement with someone we can provide the we can provide the code and as much support as possible it is this depends a lot if we have some resources for project or something because well we are a limited amount of people and the day has only 24 hours but well yes it it, it is it is possible yes so knowing that uh, it makes sense only if uh, it aims to be run on a, on an HPC infrastructure, of course, um, or not. Yes, or yes, and not because, for instance, for the cases that I show, it, it is basically yes. The code is uh, the code is portable enough to run even in a telephone, but um, but of course, if you, it, typically you are trying, you will like to solve large scale problems. So also there is another possibility is that uh, we can leave somewhere also a non-commercial version of the code, which is compiled and installed in a supercomputing system. So you ask for supercomputer uh, usage and then the code is there for you to, to be used. So yes, typically you would like to use this code in a supercomputer environment, yes. Mm -hmm. City Kanta is saying that uh, he will get in touch. He's from the Indian Institute of Technology in Delhi. Mm. Stefano, uh, do you want to speak up, Stefano? Okay, so I'm, I'm reading the question. 
Uh, is it possible in the near future to perform simultaneous multi-scale simulations to understand the complete behavior of the system? Uh, uh, yes. Well, um, it's difficult. You, you, I, I, I don't see possible. But well, we'll see. I don't see possible that you can solve up from the from the cells up to the to the organ in the same simulation, but. There are many different ways of coupling this. You don't need to do this in a very, um, there are ways of doing it. So you don't need to do this in a, in a very blunt way in which you say, it is like, I don't know, solving uh, water, water falling uh, by solving quantum mechanics equations uh, and, and the molecules. But you can do, you can improve your model taking into account these different multi-scales. So it's something that it will, it will come, uh, at, uh, it, it, it will come, it will come. Mm. Actually, uh, Stefano is, uh, is one of the PhD students of this call. So uh, he might see it happen in, uh, in, in four years. Mm. Since we'll have then this uh, molecular cell, cell scale simulation then coupled to uh, intervertebral disc tissue regulation. Yes, yes, as I, yes, the, the, the way of coupling this, it must be done in a smart way, that's, you can't do you can't do this bluntly, like saying, "Well, I will solve everything." So it's if, of course, doing it in a smart way, as we as we do it, for instance, for the cardiac cells. Uh, yes, of course, it is it is done now. It's been done for some years, and it will be done in the future. So, mm -hmm. yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So um, we will have them to go back to the hands-on, but. Uh... Before I, I would like to ask you a question, Mariano, no, or in your quality of uh, industry as an industry. Uh, so you, you were saying that uh, we must increase and in, uh, trust confidence in, in the models. But as a model and simulation service provider, professional service provider, uh, which level of trust will you have? in the simulation you're delivering in health and what do you think about uh, liability terms what are the liability terms that you you, you will put on the pro on on the service you would provide mm. yes this is a very absolutely interesting uh, question and there are we can talk about uh, about this for hours but there are different levels of liability it is not all uh, it is not all black and white so it depends on the usage. If you, for instance, if you use your code for, if uh, there is a, a medical device company that is using your code for uh, doing modeling and simulation, simulation in order to improve their, their medical device, then you don't need any, any certification for doing this. So there is no liability on you. Um, however, if you now move to a patient with, uh, with, a, with a name and face, then things are much, much different. And the model is the same. So it is very likely that you start by doing something generic on a population, synthetic population, and then you move to a, to a patient. Uh, so it's a, it's a long process. It's good to start by doing virtual, pop, virtual synthetic populations because you start gaining more and more confidence and also trying to improve the certification level of your, of your software to prepare it to achieve to the level of the, to the patient level. Uh, but it is, well, it is, a, it is a long run. It is a long run, but it is something that happened with other softwares. And well, we hope that with ours, it will, it will happen too. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, that's something that definitely has to happen. <laughs> so we use from, <clears throat> with other companies. Uh, actually then uh, tomorrow uh, at, um, at four, We'll have a roundtable about so in silico technologies, uh, and then part of the point that will be then discussed uh, with specialists uh, is uh, regulation and how mm -hmm. this interacts with the industry, with uh, academic research, uh, with providers open of the science that's behind the models, mm -hmm. and, um, and and how it interacts also with uh, the, the best interest of. Uh, of the medical system, um, yeah. So, so I guess there will be very interesting things uh, popping up uh, during this roundtable. Hmm. 
Okay, thanks, Mariano. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope the day will end smoothly. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>